What's going on, folks? We back for another story. Um, switching the names around so you don't know who it is. Um, so it was a young couple, you know, that attended or it was their church, the Greater Hope Missionary Baptist Church of Deliverance. And um, it was Pastor McMichael's first church. Um, he just married Sister McMichael's and they were married for a year. And, um, you know, they've been going to the church and just trying to put their stamp on it and make it their own. So they had bought a really big house uh, that was, you know, near the church. And, you know, they needed help with cleaning as well because it was just a, a, a whole lot to, to get done. Um, so there was a, 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 a clerk that went to that church that was trying to make some extra, extra money on the side. Um, you know, she was a college student, uh, junior year in school. And, you know, she just started helping them out. And it was just someone that they, they knew. They, they they learned, you know, that she was just going to be really working really close with the pastor. Uh, so she was doing a really great job. She was helping him at church, you know, getting organized and setting things up. So them being a young couple and not really, you know, wanting kids at right at the moment, you know, they... They they use uh, protection when they were, uh, you know, having having sex and stuff like that, and you know, they were doing their thing, whatever it may be. So they got to a point where uh, this sister Eileen, who happens to be the clerk and uh, you know helping around the house, cleaning the house for them, really started spending a lot of time with them. Um, she became really you know, good friends with the pastor, you know, not really that tight with the, with sister McMichaels, but she became really, really close. And he, you know, he, there were boundaries with that relationship. So it was nothing out of the ordinary. Um, and just really, just, just really cool people. What the pastor didn't know is that sister Eileen had a huge crush on him. She really was just mesmerized by you know just everything about him like his look um the way he preached you know the way that he just just conducted himself she just really loved how he was just on fire for god um and she just just loved just so many things about him so they were really became really close um there were times where you know she would end up staying the night at the at their house they had an extra room and you know he got to a point where he was just saying that you know they know she was going to school and you know know that she was just really uh didn't really like the, the living on campus life and how toxic it was so they ended up letting her just stay in the room and just you know she didn't have to pay anything but you know she would just have to clean and and cook and, and do all those different things so she was an amazing cook and clean like nobody's business. Um, but the thing, the reason why they didn't really mind it is because um, where her room was was way downstairs and they were way upstairs. So um, they could, you know, do what they want to do, make love, not have any issues, interruptions. You couldn't really hear what was going on. So uh, one thing she started doing is she started like listening in uh, to them, you know, getting it on their, and their affection. And she really just started getting extremely jealous and extremely like, you know, possessive of the pastor. And, and you know, every time that she could, she just wanted to kind of like tell him about certain events that were coming up and telling him all the different things Um she tried to get things set up to the point where she would be the one that could go to the, to the events um, or only she knew how to help him with certain things with his powerpoints or whatever so she just tried to make his, make her, him rely on her with everything like you know scheduling you know future dates that were coming up when he went out of town um, but she really, in the back of her head, was like she really wanted to be, uh, you know, Mrs. Ma Miss, Mrs. McMichael. She wanted to be the first lady. 
and Miss Michaels, Miss Michaels, um, Miss, um, you know, Mick Michaels kind of likes telling the pastor, like, I think she got a little crush on you, right? And he was like, no way. Like, you just, you tripping. And she was like, no, like, I really think, like, I see how she looks at you, how she always lights up when she sees you. Um, she really got something going for you. And he was like, well, it don't matter because I'm, you know, I'm married and, you know, you ain't got nothing to worry about. So, uh, over time, uh, the pastor's wife started to get kind of like, you know, just seeing how, you know, Sister Arlene moved, like how she would, you know, you know, Sister McMichaels be talking about something that on the phone that she knew the pastor like. And out of nowhere, she would see Sister Arlene you know, buying it for him or just doing really like stuff that just was like, wow. Like, like when he had his birthday and she was like basically, you know, thinking to herself what she was going to get him. Um, and the thing, there were two things that she was thinking about getting him. Um, you know, one was like a new watch and another one was just like a, um, you know, a Bible that was just like the one that he always wanted. Like it was just like made from scratch, uh, certain type of leather, um, just a, a really sturdy looking next level type of Bible. Um, so she ended up getting the watch and, uh, Sister Arlene ended up getting the Bible and she got his name engraved in it and even had stuff related to his dad, um, you know, who was the pastor and the pastor in a way, but, um, even had like pictures of the dad in the, in the Bible and had it engraved. Um, and it really just set, um, the pastor's wife off cause she was going to eventually get it, you know, for Christmas. Um, so it just really started rubbing her the wrong way. Um, he noticed Sister McMichaels noticed that, you know, that she was always texting the pastor. Sister Arlene was always texting the pastor, asking if he could pick her up from school or, um, you know, she was stranded at somewhere. And Sister McMichaels always wondering, like, why do you always have to be the one that picks her up or, or help her out? Why don't you get an Uber or something like that? Um, the pastor really just didn't understand what her issue was. Um, Sister McMichaels is like, you know, she, she, she's helped us. She's been very helpful. Like, you know, she, yeah, she's a little quirky, but you know, why are you acting like that? Um, so one night, um, you know, they were, uh, the pastor and, um, the first lady were, you know, making love and, you know, he would always after, you know, he, you know, got to that moment, um, you know, and he was using condoms and stuff that he would, um, you know, just toss it in the trash. Right. So, you know, they end up, um, you know, after they did what they did, they ended up going out for a walk um, and, and, and running some errands. And Sister Arlene literally walked up to the room. Um, she ended up using, uh, you know, that condom and, and, and his stuff in there on her. Um, and, you know, literally got herself pregnant. Now, what ended up happening is when she ended up started showing... Um, and showing signs that she was pregnant and she just really, um, just confessed to them that, you know, she was pregnant and, and, and they were like, you know, I wouldn't say they were disappointed in her, but it was just like, like, who is like, who's the person? Like, we never see you with anybody. Was this the one you met at school? And she was like, you know, this person, like, you're going to act like you don't know pastor and pastor looking at her like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she says, Pastor, this baby is yours. And he's like, the devil is a lie. Like, I don't have no, no baby by you. What are you talking about? We never had anything going on. So, um, Sister McMichael's like, wanted her to just leave and get out. Um, 
but she was like, we can take a DNA test and I can prove that this is his child. And so they ended up taking a DNA test and come to find out um, he was the father. So Sister McMichaels literally told the whole church, the whole church turned their back on him. He ended up losing his position, his role. Um, and they just ended up just saying, just being done with him. Um, she ended up having a baby and uh, basically was like, you know, she wanted to make it work with him. Um, and he was like, I really don't want nothing to do with you. And I don't know how this is possible because we never even um, did anything together. But he said he would provide for the child. So, you know, he ended up getting a couple jobs and just just actively being in the child's life. So his, his wife ended up moving on. She ended up remarrying. Um, and that person she met was a pastor too. And he ended up taking over for that church. Um, years later, uh, it was found out that this woman ended up having multiple kids from multiple men. Um, that she has pulled this and she the bat she always abandoned the child uh, when she got involved in this. But um what ended up happening was she ended up somehow confiding in, in one of her friends that she had met at the church because she had stopped going to the church and ended up confiding in one of her friends it was basically letting her know like all that went down, all that happened. So the one thing that she didn't know is that around the time of this happened, they had like a ring camera and somehow they still had access to the information, um, you know, footage and stuff like that. And they actually had her on camera literally like, all the stuff that she said that she did and she was going to do. Um, and somebody also saw, um, you know, her activity of what she had done in the past in other relationships. And they started reaching out uh, to, to, to ex-pastor uh, McMichaels and, and letting him know that she had did the same thing to, to him and all these guys. So, Long story short, um, they end up having her take like a lie detector test and found out that she was lying that about saying that, you know, all this stuff was like she had intercourse uh, with the pastor and Michaels kind of find out that they never had anything going on um, and that she had literally used that. Um, End up using his his you know empty condom um, or condom that has stuff in it and use it on herself. So, but it, you know didn't really matter. Mister Michaels, his life was pretty much over, uh, so to speak. As you know, his career, his passion to be a, a pastor, um, and it's still during his name, and he still provided for his child and. You know, look to to get full custody, uh, but him and sister sister McMichael's never got back together. 